What if I told you I'd be almost willing to bet this $5 here that this video is right? That Andrew Holschalk could be the next Doom Eternal composer? I have some compelling reasons I'm going to try to convince you with. And thanks to the YouTube members and patrons who basically sponsored this video, Big Mac Davis in the Ultraviolence tier. Let's see if I can convince you. My name's Austin. Let's dive right in. He has roots with Doom. Now, hear me out here. This is important to start here, and it does go deeper. Now, he's a true fan, just like you and I are, but that alone isn't enough. See, you gotta know why this is my first point. His IDKFA album that remade Doom 1's entire music catalog has amassed millions of views on YouTube, and people recognize him from it. Seriously, the entire music catalog. Every single track from Doom 1. He redid it. It has, without a doubt, helped him in his professional career, and also as a springboard to future opportunities. You see, the thing that sets IDKFA apart, and therefore Andrew, is that it's not just some classic Doom covers. I mean, it is THE cover that you go to for Doom 1 music. Just ask anybody to pull up a cover, and chances are, they'll pick IDKFA. It works 60% of the time, every time. It's been built up in a way that works off itself. People know it for its quality, it grows, and it spreads on YouTube. YouTube sees it, they go, hey, oh, let's spread this around, recommend it to others, and it becomes the core cover that people see. He solidified his name with Doom as a musician and a fan, no doubt. But that's an unofficial tie-in, which helps. But let's go to the official stuff now and see if you know this. He has ties to id software in more ways than just one. See, Andrew made music for Quake Champions and also has a track, Goroth, from that game as one of the Doom Eternal albums that you can play in the Fortress. So not only is that a tie through Id and Saber, who made Quake Champs, he's been immortalized with his own music in Doom Eternal. Based off his reaction to finding the track, it leads me to believe that he didn't know it was going to be there. So he didn't try or ask to work something out with Id, they did it by their own volition. Now. You may say that, well, they just picked it because it was their game, but still yet, they picked Andrews over Chris, the other composer, from the band Nine Inch Nails. Now, they know about Andrew, they know what he can write and produce, they know his abilities and are aware. And there's even a deeper level of ties, you ready to get on this little rabbit hole, or if we're playing Doom, Daisy? Here we go. He's based in Dallas, Texas. You know who else is around that area? That's right, id Software. So they're in a town called Richardson nearby, or in Final Sin if you've got that building there, and he's met some of them at QuakeCon. It's just too perfect a mix, isn't it? Speaking of Mix, or Mick rather, Mick is an Aussie and they worked with him as a contractor, so maybe Andrew would be the same instead of an actual id Software employee. But here's the thing that sets it apart. The location would really make things convenient from a business perspective, wouldn't it? No longer would id have to rely on remote communication and delivery. He could go directly in office, in-house to meetings, be right there for them, in person, all the time. He wouldn't have to move to another state or country, no big relocation fees to bring him there. It's all literally in-house. To kind of tie in with the business side of things, he has a ton of experience in the retro world. Ton of it. I mean, he's made a name for himself in the community. If you've played some of these, as they're called, boomer shooters, he's right there. So whenever a new indie or retro shooter comes out, he is the go-to guy. People know what he can bring, and it fits a shooter game. He knows how to write music for FPS. Energized. Ready to go. Period. And he's been building that experience and expertise over the years, consistently and repeatedly, not just with New Blood and Dusk and Medieval Proteus, did Rise of the Triad 2013, there's just so much of a catalog that he's built himself up with to show some of the different styles and things he can do. So we've talked about the history and business side of things, but allow me to check on the musical side. As a musician, I've seen some things in his compositions and what I've noticed that may have been missed, so check this out, see if you caught this. Andrew has the varied styles that Doom looks for. See, as a musician, I can tell you that being able to bring out different emotions in your compositions goes a long, long, long way. If you can't, it's just like speaking in a monotone robotic voice, no excitement, boring. Or you can have too much of a good thing, like heavy music if you go 90 miles per hour or kilometers per hour, wherever you are in the world, the whole entire time, yeah, sure, it sounds awesome, it's great, it's energetic, but you need a break after a while. That's kind of why Doom Eternal incorporated some of the platforming that it did to give you a rest from go, 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 arena, arena, fight, and change things up, give it some more scenery, enjoying the trip and the journey. You just don't want it to lose that special power that it has. So just like speech, music has dynamic range. You need that intensity from something like Dusk for those insanely heavy arenas where your heart is pumping, your blood pressure is rising, and your wide eyes are bigger than the icons. Yeah, let's not go there. 
Dusk comes to mind, so yet you also need the ambience, the ambience, from something like a medieval. And I don't just mean for the quiet, serene, peaceful times. That's not doom. What about the suspense of what's happening next, or the uneasiness that something just is not right here? Like Authorization Olivia Pierce and Argent Facility Destroyed from Doom 2016, still one of my favorite ambient tracks, along with Exultia, and he has both of those. Variety is the spice of death, as Doom 2016 says in the Mission Challenge, but I say it actually brings life to the music. The recently revealed potential DLC music has also been said to have hints and tones to Andrew's style and compositions. It's about knowing how to write for your subject, and in this case, it's a game. He understands, as Mick does too, he explained in a comment on one of my YouTube videos, the only thing they fear is you analysis, that you have to understand the frequencies of the guns and what happens in game and work with those, not against, to fit the music. Now, as Mick followed the low and slow feel, I think Andrew knows how to write for Modern Doom to mesh well with the game's sound and frequencies. Not to copy Mick, but have his own style. When you have the guns that are going at a higher pitched, faster tone, you need that low and slow rhythm and guitar, bass and drums to fit that void that the guns themselves don't have. Now, I think that Andrew can write for Doom, understanding the style and feel that the series has come to, and be able to fit it appropriately. It might sound different than Dusk, sure, and I love Dusk's soundtrack, but that just depends on what he needs to write for. You see where I'm going with that? The thing that Andrew understands how to do, that gives you a greater appreciation of his work, is that he knows the difference between just writing a rock song and composing a video game soundtrack with multiple different instruments, blending it together as one unit, fitting each piece to a level understanding how dynamic changes happen in music and how to piece it all together. He does this with Dusk actually. It has the dynamic music changes that Doom has, you know, when you're in and out of the arenas. So being able to craft an ambient and combat track that flow together goes a long way. He gets this. And on top of all that, he can record it too. So trust me, recording is a whole other animal than just playing. Not only do you need the recording knowledge of how the software works, you have to understand how to play with your programs and microphones to get the sound you need, mix it all together in that process, adjust and know how the different frequencies operate and which instruments take up what space, and basically, he's the real deal. And of course we know that he is far beyond driven. Yes, that is a Pantera pun. Andrew works hard, he pushes out quality work, consistently, that's key, consistently, and you have to have a solid work ethic like that for people to not only want to work with you, as they do with him, but to come back again and again. Like I said, he's worked with New Blood with several games of Rise of Tri 2013, he's no stranger to music composition and production, he's shown his value again and again, and you know what else? any time I've ever talked to him, or asked him to use music for his channel or the Rip and Tear radio segment I have on here, he's been too kind. I think that when you mix a bunch of different positive qualities together, the work ethic, friendliness, business sense, musicianship and composition, everything, that is a mix, no pun intended, that you're looking for. I want to know what you think. Comment below if you've been convinced by this video in any way, or if you haven't, let me know too, or maybe who else you'd like to see do the music. Be sure to check out another video here for more analysis. I'm Alston, and I just want to say thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. I really do mean it. So I'll see you on Twitch, Discord, or in the next video.